Microsoft's got a hardware event this spring. This is what they're going to announce. What's up, everybody? Brad here, back again. And this Friday is a special edition of the Sam's Report. Typically on Friday, I wrap up all the weekly tech news into a nice little package so it's easier to digest. And I also answer a bunch of questions from readers and listeners. It's my favorite part of the week. This week is a little bit different. We're still going to do the Q&A, but um, Microsoft is going to have a hardware event this spring. Yes, that I've been talking about this for a while. And there's a couple things that are going to be on the agenda, and you guys are going to be the first to know what Microsoft is going to bring to the table. So Microsoft has two aging products. One of them is right here. It's actually a device I use just about every day. It is one of my favorite Surface products. It is the Surface Book 2. Microsoft is going to refresh this lovely piece of hardware. Now, it's not going to be a major overhaul. It's not going to be, I don't, I'm not expecting like the design and form factor to change. I think we're going to see some uh, significant bumps to the internals. And what I think we're going to see is a uh, 10th generation Intel processors. And I believe they are going to go with the 16 series GPUs from NVIDIA, which is a little bit disappointing. So Microsoft has two Surface Book variants, the 13.5 inch and the 15 inch. The 15 inch obviously having all of the features and the high end um, functionality and all that stuff. And so on the lower end, I believe you'll be able to get a 10th gen processor without a dedicated GPU. And then it sort of ramps up from there. Now on the high end of the highest end, if you have dollars to spare, I believe Microsoft is going to, for the first time in the Surface family history, going to include Quadro graphics. Now, if you're not familiar with that, Quadro graphics are like, they're NVIDIA's commercial. They're used for like AI and ML. Um, they're not necessarily designed for gaming. They're designed for computational activities. So people doing a lot of regressions. Um, if you were Working with big data, this is going to be the type of machine that you are going to want. And that is who Microsoft is targeting, and it's going to be expensive. I don't know the exact dollar prices, but you can expect entry level pricing for the Surface Book 3 to be roughly the same as the outgoing Surface Book 2. Make sure you look at the entry pricing and not what it's on sale for currently. And so when you look at that, um, I believe they're also going to bump the RAM. Currently, you can max it out at 16 gigs. I am expecting that you're going to be able to get 32 gigs and then one terabyte of solid state storage for the Book 3. But again, look for a similar form factor. Now, the one thing to consider is that Quadro graphics draw in a significant more amount of power and they need it for that, that hungry crunching of data, right? It's going to need more power. So I'm expecting some potential changes on that side. I'm not sure how that resonates to actual form factor changes, but just know that that is something that is going to be changed, at least internally, and how the device operates from what we know today. The one reason why I say it's a little bit disappointing that there's 16 series GPUs is that NVIDIA is already shipping uh, RTX, I believe GTX and RTX mobile versions of at least the 2060 to vendors. You can go out and buy this. Microsoft has a pretty rich history of shipping new hardware with last generation GPUs. They definitely did. I believe they did it on this service book. I believe they might've been done it on the first one. I know they definitely did it uh, with the Surface Studio series as well. So this just kind of is bar for the course. Microsoft marches to its own drum beat there. But um, yeah, so it's gonna be 16 series GPU, 10th gen Intel. Um, we're looking at up to up to 32 gigabytes of RAM, a terabyte of solid state storage in a similar looking form factor. And so that should be that should be a pretty healthy bump. If you're looking for a complete design overhaul, I'm actually expecting that on potentially a Surface Book 4, although that is not concrete, that is not locked down, that's just more of a roadmap looking thing. Um, so keep that in mind. For the Surface Go 2, this is the second generation Surface Go, which has actually sold pretty dang well for Microsoft. It's been a good little device, especially in some of their corporate customer markets from what I have heard. And they are going to effectively just bump the specs. Now, there are going to be some more minor refreshes to the exterior of the device. Again, not a major refresh or overhaul. And if you look at them from a distance, you'd be like, yeah, that's a Surface Go. If you look at them up close, you will, I believe you will be able to tell a difference. But we're looking at, again, um, a somewhat disappointing Pentium Gold processor is going to be in there for the base configuration. Although I believe you're going to be able to spec it up to potentially a low end core M processor from Intel. It's all Intel, by the way. There were some rumors that it was going to be a Qualcomm device. It was going to be a 7C. Um, I'm not hearing that at this time. It's going to stick to Intel, which is what Microsoft knows, which is what they worked with in the past. And honestly, what worked well for the for the previous generation um, Surface Go. So, you know, why kind of change things up? I'm expecting that accessories should be transferable across devices as well. If they 
aren't, that would be somewhat shocking. So again, expect the same uh, style price point. I would expect 399 is the entry that is where the Surface Go originally entered in, and I don't think Microsoft is going to change that too much, and that's more than likely without a keyboard. Um, although the one thing I'm not sure of is if they are ditching eMMC memory. Remember, they have that really cheap, slow storage uh, on the entry level Go. I'm hoping that they, they bump that, but we will see. So uh, in this spring, I don't know exactly yet, but in the spring, expect a bumped uh, Surface Book 3 with the aforementioned specs, same with the Surface Go. Um, the other thing that's floating around too is they have a second generation pair of headphones, right? They have Microsoft to Surface headphones. There's a second generation pair. I'm not sure if we're going to see those this spring. I don't quite know when they're coming up, but they've been floating around for a while now and they seem to be just sort of lollygagging. Um, maybe they will show up, but one thing Microsoft will also more than likely be talking about is their Surface earbuds. Remember those things that they announced in the fall? They said, hey, they're shipping in the spring. Well, this would be a perfect time to start talking about them again because you got a hardware event, you got all the press there. Well, let's just talk about the surface earbuds um, because you've already got all the stuff there it may, would make sense for that there might be some other small peripherals and other things like that not quite sure yet on all the details but those are the big highlights that are going to be happening this spring in the hardware uh, family for Microsoft so if you've been holding out for a book uh, a surface book 2 or book 3 you might want to wait uh, I'd say another month or two before you go jumping on that. Same with the Surface Go. The reason why I say that is if you still want a Surface Book 2, once that hardware comes out, it'll be on sale at like, you know, it'll be a really good price. Or if you want to buy the Surface Book 3 so you know you have the latest generation and knowing Microsoft's refresh cycles, that thing could be relevant or the top spec for two years because that's how old this thing is. So like two and a half years almost actually, I think. And so... There you go. You, those are the big highlights. We'll see if there's any more software stuff. I haven't heard anything yet about that, but still um, keeping my ears to the ground to see if Microsoft is going to do any of that Teams for Life stuff that has been floating around. So those are the big highlights. Um, other things that happened this week that are definitely worth talking about before we dive into the Q&A is Microsoft announced a lot of details around Windows 10X. Now, this is 10X is the foldable device that Microsoft is calling Neo. The OS it is running on is called 10X. They also have a smaller device called Duo, but that is running Android. And while it is notable and I am excited about it, to me, the more important thing that Microsoft announced this week is 10X and the availability of Win32 containers. More so specifically that everything running in Windows 10X is going to run in a container. It doesn't matter if it's a UWP, any other app package platforms, which yes, is Win32. Now, the big question becomes is, hey, they're running all of this on, on, on a foldable device. Is that the future of Microsoft? No, I, I firmly believe that Microsoft is building this OS or this version of Windows 10 out on this device. It's going to be a low volume piece of hardware. It is going to sell tens of thousands. I can't imagine it being a huge sales success for Microsoft, but it's going to be piloting that type of device in the Microsoft or the Surface ecosystem. Once they are comfortable that Windows 10X runs really dang well on a folding dual screen setup, they're going to bring it to conventional hardware. It's just a matter of time. Um, the technology in there is going to be really good for mobile devices. The big thing here is that because it runs in a container, performance, unlike they made promises with Windows 10S, performance should never degrade because once you close out the container, it should just completely wipe it out. They talked about registry cleaners. If you're using a registry cleaner in 2020, please stop. It is doing more harm than good at this point in life. Um, but what this will do, this will be a big step towards really getting that open. Every time you open your device, it's going to feel like a new instance of Windows. It's going to feel fresh. It's going to feel more Chromebook-like. The UI looks personally, I personally think it looks really, really good. And Microsoft is trending in the right direction with Windows 10X. They're piloting it on the Neo. Once they're happy with it there, it will absolutely go to everything else. How do we know that? Well, it would be crazy for them not to. If you have this really good version of Windows that runs exceptionally well and can run nearly every application, and I'll come back to that in a second. Why wouldn't you bring it to laptops? Why wouldn't you? Now, desktops are a different story. Laptops, I think this makes more sense because if you think about it, when apps run in a container, there's limiting factors. One thing we don't know yet is the performance of Win32 applications in a container. While Microsoft ha does have container technology currently in Windows 10 with things like uh, the sandboxing of Edge and there's certain other features, this will be full apps being containerized. But that, what that means is that apps that require low-level access, things like antivirus, are not going to run uh, on Windows 10X. If you're running games, I don't think games are going to be a big draw for this either, at least not initially, because games that have anti-cheat software, like your AAA titles, well, 
that that software cannot run on Windows 10X because it's containerized and it can't actually access the other data. That's the point of a container. So there are going to be limitations. Those high-end, high-spec requirements are still going to need proper Windows 10. And so I don't see Windows 10 Pro especially going away anytime soon or even enterprise. But for now, Windows 10X will be more than likely a consumer-focused OS and then maybe it will scale up, especially some of the security features. Because when you can run an app in a container, it is much more secure than running an app that has native API access or native system access, I should say. So keep your eyes and ears for that. Microsoft had a pretty rough time with some of the demos, but I don't fault them for that. I applaud them for coming out early and talking about this stuff up front rather than waiting until it's too late or we don't understand. This is this is giving people who are fans of Windows something to look forward to, which has been missing it has been missing from the Windows narrative for more than a year, maybe even two years even. So I'm very happy to see that Microsoft is doing this and I applaud them for coming out in front and center and talking about it uh, this week. So there you go, guys. Uh, we are going to dive into the Q&A this week because there's a lot of questions about Xbox, a lot of questions about Surface. And so we are going to refresh the thread. I always tweet it out um, and then post it up over on the web. So here you go. Uh, and, oh, geez, I'm terrible with names, by the way, if you've not ever noticed. Uh, Andrea says, do you know anything about the Surface and Duo, Surface Duo and Neo battery life? Marginally. The thing is, it's really hard to get caught up in battery life at this time. One, for one thing, there's two screens. You think, oh, well, there's more screens, should be less battery life. But there's also a place to put two different batteries, right? So it should be comparable to what the industry standard sets for foldable devices. I don't think it's going to be any sort of like show-stopping experience, but I'm not expecting it to be abysmal by any means. Pathaga says, has Microsoft considered implementing one clip app instead of the clipboard history, which seems to get overlooked? So one clip uh, is a really old application that I, if you look way back on this channel, like, like to the early days, um, I actually got my hands on it at one point. It, all it was, was a cal calendar, calendar, a clipboard syncing application. You copy something, it show up everywhere. It was great. It's sort of there. There's clipboard history, which works. Um, and if it's also kind of, actually, I don't even know if it's available on SwiftKey yet. It's supposed to be. Um, I don't personally use SwiftKey, but what it let you, lets you do is copy something from your PC and then you should be able to access it on your mobile device. I don't think Microsoft is bringing back one clip. I think that product is, that ship has long sailed. Uh, Team 56, uh, two questions says, rumors have it that Sony will paying at least $450 per unit for the PS5 due to RAM and NAND, uh, N-A-N-D, uh, shortage. Uh, experts seem to agree. Will this affect the Series X? And if it exists, the Xbox Series S pricing as well. It absolutely, I mean, Microsoft is not immune to market forces. If there's a shortage of a certain type of product, Microsoft doesn't have some magical thing that allows them to go buy it at a cheaper price. Now they can negotiate volume because you got to remember Microsoft works on additional hardware and they can say, Hey, we're not just going to buy it for the Xbox Series X. We're going to buy it for the surface hardware. We're going to buy it for everything else that we do and maybe get a lower price point than say Sony might, but I don't think it's going to be considerably less. I fully expect that the Xbox Series X will be more expensive than the PlayStation Pro. With the caveat that Microsoft might make it the same price if they're willing to take a loss on it. So we'll see. Uh, but it, Microsoft is not immune to this. So if Sony's having issues getting this certain type of hardware, I can guarantee that Microsoft is too. Uh, and then he says, I dig the new Outlook calendar preview in the recent Windows Insider build quite a lot. Uh, we'll be seeing the preview as mail as well. Also, uh, this was written in React Native, right? I believe it was rewritten. Microsoft has been working with React Native quite a bit, so that would not surprise me. I'm hoping we're going to see that refresh of mail. There were some screenshots leaked earlier this year, and now the fact that the, cal cal the calendar, the calendar, the calendar is out. I would expect that the mail app should be following not too far behind. Uh, well, Baggerly says, Brad, I hope you're keeping it warm on this blistery cold day. I, I am. I'm, I'm actually quite happy today. So uh, with the delay of the Surface Hub 2X, do you believe that they will also delay the camera accessory that was going to be launched with it? Or we might see this at this year's hardware event. Interesting question. Microsoft has a couple of USB Type-C cameras that attach to the Surface Hub 2. Um, I don't actually know if it was specific to the 2X. All they are are quite literally these USB Type-C cameras that would plug into the USB Type-C port on the side. I'm hoping that Microsoft will sell these independently because Microsoft has not revi re revamped their Life Series cameras that they have in extremely long time, and this would be a great time to do it. I have not heard if those cameras are coming, but I, I still hope that they are. So, And when I say coming at the spring event, I have not heard that explicitly, but I hope that they are. 
Uh, NGC224 says, is Windows 10 10X a code name or is that going to be the actual name? It is, I believe, the actual name. And we know this because if you download the emulator that Microsoft released of Windows 10X, the code name was actually in there. It was called Windows Lite. You, if you, again, scroll back on this channel, you see me talking a lot about Windows Lite. Windows Lite became Windows 10X and some of those code names still retained, are still retained inside of the emulator. Uh, John 13123 says, uh, will the Xbox One support third-party UWP app games running on the console, same as the Xbox One? This is a fantastic question and something I need to dig into. Microsoft, the reason why I'm hesitating on saying yes, it will, because currently right now, the, Sys, the Series X runs a very similar version of Windows as uh, the Xbox One X, right? That's not a big surprise, but they are making significant changes under the hood for the next generation stuff. And I don't think it has fully materialized yet to a point where I know confidently whether or not the answer to that question is yes or no. We should hopefully know here, I would say in the next 90 days, whether or not that is going to be true or not it's a good question it's a really good question though uh bruno Ab says or bruno A bruno ab uh recently matt booty stated that microsoft was focusing on current studios instead of looking for more acquisitions however we had some rumors that they might be looking at a studio in poland do you know if the acquisitions if they are in current negotiations current negotiations with any studio and do you think that they might announce another acquisition at e3 uh thanks for the great work so the acquisitions are, are very tough to predict um like platinum games they were looking at investing and then they ended up taking money from tencent um microsoft will tell you this and this is just kind of my standard thing it's microsoft looks at buying everybody they've looked at buying ea they've looked at they've literally looked at buying every single company that they come across and when it makes sense they go make the acquisition if it doesn't then they don't I don't personally know about the Poland rumors uh, per se, but if it's a smaller game studio, you can bet your dollar that Microsoft has at least thought about it, whether or not they're actually going to make a move it is dependent on so many things. You got to also remember too, uh, Microsoft has bought a lot of game studios. Uh, Phil Spencer has laid out a lot of capital to acquire these. They need to start showing that these buying studios is actually going to make a return on the investment. Um, that is one thing that I'm hearing from the financial side of Microsoft is that, hey, yes, it's, it's fine that he went out and bought all these studios. He had all the support of Microsoft and that's why they did it. But at some point, you can't just start buying studios and then not getting a return. So we're sort of in this phase, and I think this is where Matt Booty is getting at, where Microsoft corporate right not meaning phil spencer but like the execs and the overseeing board need to see a return on that investment that they've made in the past few years because remember and we all know this that games take a very long time to develop you, you buy the company or buy the studio and then it is three to five years ish uh before a property comes out to see if it was worthwhile so keep all that in mind i think we're kind of in that maturation phase of waiting to see what these studios do and if the model works out then microsoft will continue to snatch them up Brother Nod says, is there any hope of Outlook on the phone getting some major updates, stuff like uh, intelligent location additions for calendar appointments or even being able to select uh, more than one reminder time frame? Yeah, that's, that would be nice. Uh, also, if you were starting your career today, what would you pick differently? Would you pick a different company? Uh, oh, okay, so two-part question. So he's asking if Outlook is going to be updated to include location-based activity reminders and all that good stuff. I think so. I, I know that there was a pilot program that included similar things, uh, but it was linked to Cortana. And I don't know what happened with, because we all know that Cortana has kind of like fallen off the radar for Microsoft. And so I don't quite know um, where that project stands. And he says, if you were going to start your career again today, would you pick a different company to follow to be your specialty? That's a really good question. Um, the reason, one of the ways I got started with Microsoft was I just, I genuinely enjoyed following the developments of Vista. I was building a media center at the time. I was using a well, well, media center and I was waiting for the Vista version to come out. And I was playing with that really early stuff. And um, one of the best pieces of advice I ever got is uh, for my career is that be interesting in your, or be in, I can't even say it right, be interested and you'll be interesting, right? I'm, I'm genuinely interested in things like Xbox, Surface, Microsoft Teams, the Office, which is Microsoft as a company. And hopefully that comes off in the presentation because I, I'm interested in that. So to answer your question, would I pick a different company? I don't know, maybe like it, it's all just 
lined up to timing. Like a Google would be an interesting one to follow if you started 10 years ago. Not so much interesting to follow them now at this point, right? And people who are just jumping into the Microsoft bandwagon or, or fandom or whatever you want to call it with the stuff, it's not as interesting for them because they haven't seen all the, the failures and things that have gone on to build up to the status where Microsoft is today. They didn't get here by accident. It was a lot of failures and a lot of wins. And so it's been fun to just follow along on that journey. Uh, Eternal Shot Eye says, my question is, Microsoft announced xCloud after the disastrous performance of cloud computing on Crackdown 3. Please explain to me why it was a disaster for Crackdown 3 on consoles, but it will be buttery smooth on xCloud. Uh, they will be using the same architecture and data centers from Crackdown 3. How would it fare even more with Crackdown 3 runs on xCloud, but the console ver... Okay, I think I see what you're saying here. So, Crackdown 3 Cloud was not great. xCloud is... A different thing. So you you can't overlay the fact that Crackdown 3 was run in a cloud and xCloud is run in the cloud. These are two totally different things. Crackdown 3 was a demonstration of what you can do with a game using cloud streaming data. So you had a local game running and then you streamed in additional multiplayer assets from the cloud, specifically collisions. That's what Microsoft was trying to show off with that game. And it was tough. I agree. Crackdown 3 was not a perfect example of that. But then how is xCloud different than Crackdown 3? It's to it, it is totally different things. That's like looking at a Kia Sorento and saying, wow, that's just a car and it has an engine. How can the Toyota Camry be so much better? Now, somebody's got a Kia Sorento and is going to yell at me. But you guys know what I mean. Like, Kia is a lower end. Toyota is known for rock solid reliability. But they're both cars, right? They both have engines and run on gas xCloud is completely separate from what Crackdown 3 was. They both run in Azure is just about the only similarity. Microsoft has been working on xCloud technology since I think 2012. I'm trying to remember exactly when they first showed it off, um, but it, it was around that time and xCloud works really dang well. I put up a video yesterday comparing Android and iOS xCloud streaming and it is good. It, it is well worth the investment Microsoft has made so far. And I'll be curious to see how these things uh, materialize going forward. Uh, the Joe Finn says, any feeling about how open Microsoft is going to be with Windows Core OS? Will there be a general purpose insider build which could be installed on existing Windows 10 devices anytime soon? So Windows Core OS is the foundation, I believe, for Windows 10X. And what Joe is asking is, is there going to be an insider program? Well, we kind of have one right now, actually. If you go get the emulator, that's about as close as you're going to get. I hope that they bring a proper insider program, but right now Microsoft is keeping this stuff really locked down. I don't think we're going to see Windows 10X on a laptop with the caveat you can already hack windows 10x onto a surface go there's already tutorials out there so it can absolutely be done that is not the issue the issue is whether or not microsoft is going to support it. it's much like um a hackintosh right you can put osx on just about anything anymore now whether or not it's supported and every time windows update runs it breaks that's a whole different story so i don't think we will see one yet but i bet we will eventually uh, Craig R says, hi, Brad, love the show and Petra for keeping us up to date. Very much appreciate the shout out, Craig. Uh, does Windows 10X support PowerShell Windows subsystem for Linux and the new terminal? These are good questions. I believe it does support PowerShell. Uh, actually, it's running on a very similar framework as the subsystem for Linux. I believe, I believe the intent is, hmm. This is a good question. I need to actually come back to this because I know that PowerShell worked in some early Windows core stuff. I don't know if it actually works yet on um, Windows 10X. My gut says that it is going to be serviceable with PowerShell because that is such a powerful tool inside the Microsoft world. And I fully expect that to see Windows 10X devices in the corporate world in some segments, meaning like end user for retail point of sales type, type scenarios. And you're gonna to wanna to be able to manage those in bulk as an administrator. That's a really, really good question. Uh, he says, will xCloud support Chromecast on Android as there is no technical limitation and new Edge browser supports it? So it should. So there, there, this is a, a loaded question. Will it support it? It should. Will Google allow it is the other question. We don't know yet. Now, if you can play it through the browser, then you should be just fine. Uh, any updates on Teams for Life, xCloud for Windows, and Surface Up 2X? So Surface Up 2X is dead. That is, it's delayed. It's effectively off the drawing board for now for a long time. Teams for Life still poking around on that one. If we see it, it might be this spring. Um, obviously, you can just rewind this episode if you want to know what hardware is coming at the spring. And then xCloud for Windows does exist. That is not a thing. Or not, 
That's not an issue. The reason why we are not seeing xCloud on Windows yet is Microsoft is more concerned as looking for a mobile phone. Microsoft is more concerned about perfecting the mobile experience than they are in the browser. Because if you're playing in the browser, Microsoft can test that very, very easily internally. What is not as easy to test is to test all the different permutations of Android, all the different iterations of iOS, although iOS is much more limited. So they want that initial feedback from the mobile users before they say, yeah, go play in a browser because they want that data first because that is more important to making xCloud a success than performing perfecting it in the browser. Uh, Good Bar says, with Essential closing up shop and no longer providing updates, what do you think about continuing using a phone when it no longer receives security updates? Um, so as Simon points out, he says, it's generally not a good idea to run, especially Android without security updates. All that being said, I, is your world going to end overnight by running an essential phone that is no longer supported? No. Um, I would also personally look at the XDA community. They are great about providing, providing, providing alternative images. You might be able to just flash it back to just standard Android and then be able to run security updates that way would be uh, what I would try to do. Uh, super... Oh. Super Greg Numa says, based on Apple's limitation of the App Store and lack of streaming services like NVIDIA Now on iOS, how exactly do you see Xbox being able to get a fully featured streaming app on iOS, even though xCloud doesn't directly compete with Apple Arcade? I'm not sure Apple would prefer it if you're going to game on iOS in their ecosystem. This is an interesting question because Apple wields a lot of control about how people can play games on their stuff. And to his point, they launched Apple Arcade. That is how Apple wants you to game on your mobile device. All this being said, I feel like Microsoft and Apple should be able to work this out. I'm not, I haven't heard anything yet. Remember, we have Stadia on there, but although Stadia doesn't game, stream games directly, if if Apple comes through and says, nope, you can't run xCloud on iOS because it competes with our product, that is opening Apple up to a massive can of worms of regulation. And Microsoft has the funding and the insights uh, and inside connections to actually help push that through. I don't think Apple would be dumb enough to actually limit that stuff. So, yeah. Um, next question says, uh, true star says, hi, Brad. Thanks for all the good work. Appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in. Do you think the surf team could be working on a flat one screen Android surface phone as well? Like for instance, the Google pixel or galaxy smartphone. I don't think so. I don't think they're going to be doing that. Personally speaking, Microsoft has moved past the standard looking phone. Microsoft is investing heavily into foldable devices because they, that is a market that is still developing and not mature and microsoft can at this time still be a big player in that segment so should they should they build a single screen phone maybe but i think it's going to undercut their narrative of hey come build dual screen devices because microsoft's making a hedge bet here they've got dual screen android support now and they've got dual screen windows support if either one of this platform takes off microsoft is there already competing and they're not coming from behind and a single screen, single panel phone, they're already way behind the market. And that market is extremely mature. So uh, Mr. PKAI says, do you think we'll still be able to play PUBG in Win32 containers on 10X? No, <laughs> I don't think we will. I, I, don't, I don't think that's going to be a possibility. I really don't. And then T182 says, is the official launch of xCloud coming this year or a ways off yet? So I believe it is going to happen in the second half of this year. I think that is the targeted objective. Obviously, timelines could slip. Things could change. But that is what Microsoft, I believe, is internally targeting for a launch later this year. So there you go, guys. Uh, favorite part of my week doing those questions. Hopefully, you got some good info out of the Surface Book 3 uh Surface Go 2, I almost screwed those up there, event happening later this spring. And with all that being said, guys, hit that subscribe button. We'll catch all of you right back here next time.